We're back. Segment two uh, this week of Citizens Forum is the Walter and Jack show. Um, first, I'd like to thank our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that make it all happen. Uh, Walter, we're going to start off talking a little bit about smart meters, but almost as a metaphor for everything else that's going on with our crazy, you know, ruling elite. Uh, this was in the Times Colonist, uh, Tuesday, October 1st. Today is Wednesday, October 2nd. It says, the regulator can't reject smart meter opt-out fees. It's a really important story because what it's saying is that in law, somebody, the government, the provincial government, the provincial government has decided that they're going to force everybody to take smart meters and they're going to force them by putting on ridiculously stupid fees if you refuse to do what they want, what Christy Clark and her puppet masters want, mm -hmm. which is everybody gets a smart meter. And if you say no, it's $35 a month per meter. I know a business where there's three or four meters, there's, there's let's say three meters, $100 a month to come in and read those because that's what they're doing. It's my way or the highway from our corrupt provincial government. I'm glad you're getting worked up over it, Jack, because <laughs> yeah. I have been for a long time. Firstly, you have to remember, there, are, there is no real opt-out according to the, the energy minister. Uh, they said they gave three options, but if you look at those options, they all lead to the eventuality that you will get a, you'll get smart metered. So it's just a smoke and mirrors tactic, it's a public relations tactic to trick people into thinking that they're making a compromise when they're not. Now the fees are exorbitant, they're ridiculously charged. We know that, uh, you know, that the, it's a cash cow for the for hydro. You're gonna make a lot of money off people. People who have, have brains and are smart enough not to get this technology on their house, are going to be penalized for it you know it's a it's like an extortion fee you know you have to pay not to be harmed by your government now you're saying the fees are ridiculously high and i'm saying the same thing but in this story in the times colonist uh, tuesday october 1st it's made pretty clear that the public is being told that this is the cost it's going to cost bc hydro this much and that's why the government is putting this monthly fee of $35, because BC Hydro has convinced the provincial government that this is the real cost. So there's a real in. If somebody wants to look into that issue, there may be a way in. They're relying solely on BC Hydro's uh, figures. Nobody's yeah. checking it. So maybe somebody can start to look into that. Because, I mean, you gave, if, if somebody is, 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 checking just 20 meters a day. 20 meters a day is $700. Well, I would say, you know, easily you could read 100 meters in eight hours. You pay the, you, that's $3,500 of fees. You pay the worker $200, uh, so you get $3,300 left yeah. over. And yet BC Hydro was saying this is the cost, so that may be an in. But the underlying point of all of this is that smart meters are completely and totally unnecessary, and yet the people of BC are, are being charged one billion dollars to install them. Yeah, well, and that's just the start of it. I mean, they're, they're going to be changing out these meters and charging to the end of time, Jack. So we're, we're really, you know, if you look at it, of course, my big concern was, of course, with John Horgan making these comments that, you know, that should go to the Utilities Commission. I guess, you know, the NDP did hint that maybe they would do that had they become government. But be clear about this, the NDP are for smart meters. They're not, never, not once have they ever said they were gonna take them out. They're, they're, you know, they're now quibbling around the edges about the details of opting out, uh, which is not a real opt out, it's just extortion fee really, because you're gonna to have to pay not to be harmed. And the scientific evidence is very compelling that this type of technology is harmful to human health Okay. So, you know, we're, we're really in a, in a situation where the government is saying, okay, you know, if you don't let us do this, it's going to cost you money. Now, let's talk about the issue of harmful to human health. 
BC Hydro basically says the meter runs for a minute a day or it's less, you'd have to be on your cell phone for 10 years to equal the, the impact of a, of a smart meter. But you said that all, under oath, a technician in the United States who works for the utility company in California or something said that the meter pulses between, you, I think you said 14,000. Yes. And, uh, and up to 190,000 times, times a day. A day. So this, this to me sounds a bit scary that this, I mean, maybe it's perfectly safe, but to hear that this meter is pulsing this is what somebody says under oath, not the propaganda from BC Hydro, not the misinformation from the government, but under oath, 14,000 pulses a day to 190,000. 190,000, all depending upon the meter and where it's in the, in the mesh and what functions it has to have. But some meters are acting like hubs uh, in, a, in a router of, of like a Wi-Fi situation and they are very, very active all the time. The thing is you have to remember is that when they're under oath, it's a very different story than when you have the public relations department for BC Hydro or some of their affiliates telling you this stuff, which really in true, is, is false. You know, you might say, well, it's because of the technology and they're generally correct. But, but it's not, it's, this is, they're using sophistry to mislead the public, and which doing is a huge disservice. I hate to say it, but I don't know what sophistry means. Well, it's using, using words in a way that could be understood in two different ah, fashions, okay. you know. Uh, and the public really doesn't know the question to ask. I mean, it's the spikes of the energy that are most biologically harmful. They happen in, 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 in milliseconds, in thousands of seconds. So it takes, you know, a, a few thousand spikes to make up a, mil, uh, a minute of transmission. So that's what hydro does. They add up all those little spikes and say it's only a few minutes a day. But if you actually look at the operation of the meter, it's operating all day, 24-7. So, you know, uh, but these high energy spikes are, 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 are very short duration. Now, if you look at the scientific evidence, and this is something that, you can't get around, you know, the International Agency for Research on Cancer. These are the worldwide organization that designates carcinogenic agents have, have designated this type of radiation as a type 2B carcinogen in the same category as dioxins and lead and paint and, and uh, pesticides and all sorts of very nasty things. You can't get around that fact, Jack. That is the way it is. That's the reality. This, these designations uh, according to a lot of people in the panel, should have been even even um, stricter and even a higher warning should have been placed on them. But because of politics, they were they weren't allowed to do it. But the thing is, is that the utility company, the liberals, they can they can do whatever they want, but they can't change reality. This is a very harmful technology, and it's proven to be harmful scientifically, and they're forcing us to put it on our homes. So that's the situation we are now in in Canada. Um, you know, and, and I think the dangers, I mean, I just don't like the sound of 14,000 pulses a day of what I believe to be a dangerous radiation wave going through my body. I just don't see any need for it. And if it's 190,000, that's just like 15 times worse. This is a very good story in the Times, in the Times colonists on Tuesday, October 1st. It may, it may point people in the directions of some way to attack what the government is doing to us. Uh, it, you know, they're available online or in the libraries. I hope people can pick it up if anybody's interested in really fighting this and seeing if there is a way in. Um, can you just tell us something else about the court case? Where was it or who was the... It was uh, uh, Pacific Gas and Electric in the United States. Those, uh, if you remember that name, that was the, the company that owned the huge gas plant that was polluting the groundwater in the Aaron Brockovich story, where uh, you know they were showing showed that the whole town was being being uh, basically made sick and, and, and we were dying because of the pollution, 
and PGE and he fought that for years but finally lost the case. Well, they're back here again promoting smart meters and um, the California, you know, the, the, it, it eventually landed in court under some type of testimony and uh, they were forced to, to tell the truth. And uh, that's, that's the evidence that I rely on is when, when, they're, when they're setting it on a, in court under oath, that's pretty good, uh, something to go with, right? Fortunately, in Canada, nobody ever has to appear in court for these things, so we don't get any truth. Yeah. Um, you know, we. I wanted to ask the the general question: Do corporations cause cancer? Which is, you know, something I guess we've I've asked on the show a few times, and I think they do. I think they do. There's no question to, in my mind that they do, and. I was listening to CFAX a while ago and everybody's talking about the next run for the cure sponsored by one of the banks or something like this. They're always trying to cure cancer in the media and the banks and the corporations and of course people. We all, we, we, you know, nobody wants to get cancer. But it raises the question, why don't they ever talk about prevention? Why don't they ever talk about run for prevention? And I think the reason is they know the corporations cause cancer, so if you're going to start preventing it, you have to do something to the corporation. If you look at the close associations between the BC Cancer Agency and large corporate interests, and you look at the funding that's being provided to the BC Cancer Agency, just for an example, they are another corporation, and they are there to, to promote this agenda of uh, of allowing people to ha get cancer, and then there being for people that who, who have cancer are not in a very strong negotiating place about uh, what's going to happen to them next. They'll do anything to survive. Who who wouldn't? So they're great great customers for all the pharmaceuticals and all the other therapies that they want to ram down our throats. Now the Center for Disease Control in British Columbia, some of some of the inquiries I made to them also are very heavily infiltrated by by industry. Uh, they're experts at suppressing information and I, I call them the Center for Disease Information Control because they control the information on statistics on incidents of cancer. It's almost impossible to get a straight answer out of these guys and again if you look at who they have working for them uh, when I was inquiring about the the radiation issues around smart meters and stuff they had on their panel uh, that they, they, they would go to to ask if it, something was, uh, if a study was legitimate or credible. Uh, they had a, a fellow from BC Hydro on the panel and a couple people from the Canadian military. None of them were qualified, none of them were researchers. There were no doctors, no not epidemiologists, no researchers, just a bunch of schmoes that seemed to land on this committee that were telling the Centers for Disease Control, whether a study was was valid or had credibility, and and Dr. Perry Kendall sends those studies on over to these guys. So they, let's face it, this is this is not up in the air. It's not a conspiracy theory. These guys are right in there controlling our bodies that we rely on in in these institutions, and um, we're just not giving the straight goods on stuff. We're just simply baffled and confused by it all. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, that's, uh, that's the way I see it, too. I mean, we're, we're in a mess in a lot of different fields. This is just one more example of it. I want to move to the issue of homelessness. Um, you know, we've said a few times on, on the show that Canada does have a housing policy, and that housing policy is homelessness yeah. and exorbitantly expensive housing right across the country, yeah. which is, once they raise interest rates, is, is going to be an absolute disaster for our country. And people are, are going to be just caught under a, a tremendous yoke of debt. And this has been all, all done deliberately. You know, it's been done deliberately. We're not in the situation we're in, you know, by accident. Um, so, I'd just like to point out that, you know, they always say there's no money to solve the homeless issue. There's no money to solve the, uh, you know, a lot of people at the bottom end are living in very inadequate housing. There's a lot of inadequate housing around. Um, so 
you could build 30,000 units of social housing or any kind of housing, 30,000 units of good housing at a cost of $100,000 per unit for what the Royal Bank made in profit in the last three months. And the media and the politicians and the people who run this country have the gall year after year after year to say they can't solve the homeless problem. You could build 30,000 units of housing at a cost of $100,000 per unit for what one bank has made in the last three months. And people, and Canadians are told we can't solve this problem. I mean, you can see there's, there's some real deeper problems in our country. Homelessness is the symptom. No democracy and no media is the problem. I agree entirely, but you know, the thing is that to turn it around, we have to start putting demands on, on our elected representatives. It's the last thing we have. And my concern is, is that uh, there's not enough of, uh, uh, of a spark in the general public. You know, people, this kind of a malaise, you know, people will feel uncomfortable about, about it, but they don't know what they can do. And uh, believe me, the guys that are running the show love that. Uh, keep complaining, but don't do anything about it. And really, the general population has to wake up. We have to get on onto an agenda of really having real democracy. Uh, we have to elect people that will really represent us. There is the odd person that does go to Ottawa, and Elizabeth May is a good example, that uh, we could do with a lot more Elizabeth Mays, uh, for sure. And um, we could turn this around just by simply, just becoming engaged in, in the process. And uh, shy of uh, just an out, outright overthrow of a democracy, uh, it could occur. We could have great changes in this country, but the public has to get engaged and we have to get going. Well, I'll say that I think so many Canadians have worked so hard for so long on so many issues and we're just beaten back time after time after time. Look at the energy that's gone into, well, take the homeless issue. Look at the amount of energy that Canadians put into you know, trying to help out in, in, in so many different ways. The yeah. solution isn't allowed us. Um, look at the smart meters. Look at how hard we've, so many thousands of people have fought on that. Look, look I mean, the, the Enbridge pipeline, the massive amount of energy that's going into that. Yeah. But they keep beating us down. They just keep beating us down. Well, I mean, that's one thing, but I, I always try to look at the positives and I yes. try to say, okay, what can we do about this? Everybody that, every person that makes a commitment in their, in, in their own heart, say, okay, I'm gonna make this, a better, this world a better place. I'm not gonna put up with that nonsense anymore. Uh, I'm, for instance, I thought not uh, the, the voter turnout in the last provincial election was a very strong indicator that people we're sick and tired of, of the status quo, of the liberal NDP coalition, basically. That really is much not much difference between them. I think a lot of people looked at that and said, we're not going to participate. But if we could get people to come back into the system, have real candidates that mean something, you know, the Green Party has a chance to rejuvenate. Um, you know, the NDP could also, if they chose the right leader, um, if the NDP chose uh, uh, like a Jack Layton type leader in British Columbia, they would be they'd be in office forever. Uh, but what would they be doing? That's well, that's they the problem. would be <laughs> they'd be fighting the man most of the time because it'd be a lot of lot of unhappy companies and corporations. But uh, do you think do you think that's what the NDP would do if they were elected? Well, to a certain degree, you know, uh, Dave Barrett was a good example of a lot of great policies and programs. We still have them to this day, and he was only elected for three years or something. So, I mean, uh, there is always a chance that we can turn this ship away from the rocks. We just simply have to get engaged and start working at it and not to throw up our hands. And we, we can't, when we have, uh, uh, you know, the um, members of the legislature, assembly, legislative assembly, and and, and, and uh, members of the federal government telling us stuff that we know is outright BS. 
We just simply have to say, contact well, you know, one, them and just say yeah, we're not Yeah, one thing that's easy back. to do is phone. That's right. Yeah, one thing that is easy to do is phone. If you go into the blue pages, you know, uh, at the, yeah. you can get the, a, a federal government number and a provincial government number, and they will happily give you the number of any of your MLAs, the Premier's office, the yeah. Premier herself, you know, our MPs. Start just, maybe that's, that's something that's pretty easy to do is just start phoning them. Just start phoning them, just start phoning them. And become expert in, 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 in one, on one issue and be very good at it and be up on the topic. I mean, that's always a smart thing to do. Uh, all the citizens always rely on each other for, for good quality information. I try to do that for around the smart meter issue because I'm so, so keenly interested in it. And you'll find after a while, you know, guess what? You are on top of the issue pretty good and you do know the players and you realize that the politicians really are not doing the job. And then all the issues are kind of the same too. Yeah. So because it's always the same game, it's the same undemocratic politicians and the corporate media that never seems to quite get around to telling us the truth. Yeah. Walter, we're down to a minute. I just want to mention again what you, what you said. A smart meter, once the system is up and running, and it's not yet here in Victoria, they're just getting it started, but once it's up and running, your smart meter in your house is going to be pulsing, be, let's say, between 14, well, let's just say 14,000 times a day. 14,000 times a day. That can't be good. It may not be terrible. Let's hope it isn't, but it can't be good. Well, it's, it's outright dangerous, too. And, uh, you know, I think uh, we have a chance still, Jack, even with the smart metering, uh, uh, you know, a program. There's a lot of weak links there still. Uh, these meters can be turned off. The wireless components can be turned off. Uh, we could have... And we're going to have to leave it there. Have meter readers <laughs> again. <laughs> meter readers. Thanks for watching this segment of uh, Citizens Forum, and thank you, Walter. Pleasure, Jack.